I think you mentioned uh, some very uh, important points as well. Uh, not, uh, I still want to refer to your yesterday's speech, uh, but uh, in combination, you can, we can see that uh, uh, reaching competitiveness needs a change in the public administration uh, to be competitive as a public administration itself. And to have a very close look which things have to be served, have to be provided by the public administration, and which parts uh, are better done, better served by the private sector. And how can we organize the links in between? And I think that's uh, uh, very crucial in every nation, national, on, on the national level as well as on the regional and the, and the, and the, and the local level. And the local level usually has to deal with, with the day-to-day uh, -day needs of, of people, so the uh, services of general interest. Uh, they, uh, they are rather linked to the local level, but uh, security, uh, justice, these are subjects on the, on the national level. And what we could see in Austria is, is really is important uh, to organize e-government in a common way where all different levels of administration work closely together from the very beginning. And uh, if, that if that works, if you get this uh, into working, then it's, uh, it's a great help for making uh, administration much more efficient and to make it much closer to the people because uh, uh, many people know how to deal with, uh, uh, with the internet, with uh, uh, the electronic uh, devices, um, uh, but and uh, the big uh, uh, sign mark, uh, you also have to think of the ones who are, are not able uh, to use these devices, who are too old for that, uh, who have, can't afford it. For them, you have to, to provide an inclusive uh, process uh, to get them into the circle again uh, and to, to, to let them participate uh, on, 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 uh, on public services as they would have before uh, when uh, we did all the administrative work on paper. Um, I think that's, that's, that's very crucial to, to, to think of that, to take it into account. Um, thank you very much, all four panelists. And now the floor is yours, the audience. Yeah, there's one. Uh, hello, um, my name is Milena Lazarevic. I come from Belgrade for, from a think tank called European Policy Center. I actually have a question for all the three lady ministers. Um, you all spoke uh, very vehemently about uh, the public administration reforms uh, going on in each of the countries. And it seems from all of the three presentations that public administration reform is quite high on the agenda of the, of the governments. How high actually is it? Is it really at the top of the agenda also of the prime ministers, of the, of the political leaders? And do you think that there is a, a strong potential for this peer pressure, which we can see actually uh, exists in a way countries would like to, to have their public administration reform recognized as the best, as the leading in the, in the, in the region? How strong is the, the potential for this peer pressure uh, among the countries in the region? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I can't see another. Oh, yes, there's another hand up. Thank you. My name is Fatos Mustafa. I'm coming from the Regional School of Public Administration. Actually, I have a question for Mr. Svilanovic. Um, as we can see, like, uh, I, I agree with that you know, like the public administration reform is a national business, let's say. But still, by setting the three fundamentals from the Commission, somehow swift fr move from, uh, let's say, if it was considered as a public administration reform as bad shoes, which the, sh the, the, the legs were adopted to the bad shoes, now transformed to at least to a cardio illness, to a uh, blood pressure where you have to permanently treat with. And in the meantime, whatever you treat us, you have to take care that you are not in against of you know, like the, the rules of this treatment. Uh, yesterday you mentioned uh, the internal integration within the, regional, uh, within the region. Uh, what RCC can do in facilitating at least you know, like, uh, this, the th four fundamentals of free movement of people, goods, services, and so on, since we know that within the, the, the region there are still there are visas among them, themselves, and you have to apply to some other countries in order to go to the other one, which sometimes is even closer to go to the country than to, to apply a visa. And you have to apply one week in advance and then go back, and, which is like really a lot for, for, the, for the regional cooperation. Thank you. Thank you. I 
Yes, there's another question. Yeah, I'm Kelman Zayazi, I'm director of NALAS. Oh, I would like to take advantage of uh, this Brexit uh, uh, unfortunate outcome. Uh, probably this will um, trigger some reflection uh, on, uh, on the EU level, how the things are done and what should be changed. And uh, I would like to, to, to give a message from NALAS uh, for DG uh, NIR. Uh, how things could be changed. Uh, and uh, reflecting also to uh, the discussion about the, the decentralization. What is the status? Uh, for us, uh, the, uh, the basic uh, drive for this decentralization, the platform is uh, the char European Charter of Local self Government. So even though it's not in the acquis, it is uh, the Council of Europe is uh, providing this, uh, this platform. Uh, but uh, I think for our countries, the, the main drive should be uh, another one. I mean, of course, uh, within the, the charter. Uh, uh, the main drive should be uh, that the decentralization will bring economic development. Uh, that's, uh, that is uh, already, uh, there are already studies that are uh, proving such a uh, correlation. But also, also uh, related to uh, what uh, what was presented, uh, the results of the, the barometer, the Balkan barometer, these are uh, uh, the the citizens' uh, dissatisfaction with governance in general, and the public services. So the the opportunity to to change this will be decentralization as well. But, and not to forget a big threat for all our countries is depopulation. Uh, this a movement from small cities to big cities, rural capital movement, but also uh, the uh, uh, the prospects in the, in uh, in this uh, very uh, <clears throat> long transition. A lot of young people are also uh, uh, seeing their their future outside of of the region. So that's that's another important drive. If, if, uh, 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 if we increase the service satisfaction, the citizen satisfaction on public services, not only in capital cities, but in, in rural and in small cities, this will, this will be an important element to keep the prospects for econo economic growth. Because without population, there's no economic growth. Thank you very much. Now I'll give the uh, panelists uh, the opportunity to, to answer to the questions. Uh, who would like to start? Uh, is, in order. All right. Mr. Svilanovic, you are the first <laughs> for, in this, for this go. Okay, thank you. I'll briefly respond to the visa issue. It is uh, for the respective authorities of Pristina and Sarajevo to discuss and resolve this issue. We do not have a problem anywhere else in the region unless I'm mistaken. Uh, I know the history and I know the steps they've been through in the Bosnia and Herzegovina, but I'm not a representative of Bosnia and Herzegovina, therefore I cannot explain why, how, etc. But this is an issue. Since you've asked me whether there is a role for the RCC, no, there is no role for the RCC. I, this is why I, I, I increased the tone in order to, to send a clear message. You may see it as a post-Brexit referendum tone, but it does not have to be. But just wanted to be clear. And I'm coming back to this. I wanted also to be clear because I was in the European Parliament. I witnessed the debate and I've got a clear message. No, the way the country is territorially decentralized cannot be questioned by anyone in the EU as long as the country respects the rights of the people. We can all advocate, and there I'm a believer together with you, that this is good. But therefore, there can be a, a minister for France saying, guys, I don't believe in this. We are very happy the way we organize our country, and that's it. So I just wanted to be clear. We have to understand that what is the key and what is not the key. And then we can agree on some policies for the region and within the region. Therefore, I'm siding NALAS, and we are there very much together. Uh, also, the financial facility related uh, to NALAS is something that RCC will continue supporting and requesting for the, from the Commission. But I'm sorry, guys, we're discussing everything else in the context of Brexit, but not one thing. The second biggest contributor said no. Money. They are contributing one-sixth 
of the EU funds. New life, completely new. Um, I was asked to address about the question of how the public administration reform is treated within our country and uh, I must say that that the, gov the public administration reform is indeed very high on the government agenda and it, it, it was for the previous six year and years and it will be for the next five years uh, when the new strategy will be on power and then later we'll see. Uh, it is very important though because the government considers that public administration is practically the mirror for the government efficiency and, and, and government performance. And if a customer of a government services, of a public services is not satisfied of on the way how he is treated as a customer, then he is making his own decisions and resolutions that he is not going to support the government anymore and the government will not be in a position on, their, on the next election, elections to govern or to work hard to achieving the economic growth. So this is why we consider that, that public administration reform is of crucial re importance for our government and for our citizens. They have to be satisfied the way the government is providing for their rights and their duties to be completed. And this is why when I spoke in my presentation, I spoke about the results, not the promises. No, no what we are planning to do, no uh, why we are doing and how we did it, but the exact results of our work, because this is the, the, the proof that we are considering the public administration reform as highest of the, on the reform agenda. Thank you. Um, I should uh, say that in, in Serbia, uh, as, uh, in contrast to Macedonia, I would say that public administration reform was not a high priority until the current government. And, uh, but I am now, as I said, also speaking at the end of, uh, uh, tail end of the term of this current government, and I cannot uh, uh, speak for the coming government. But I, I, I would say that certainly two aspects are sure to, to remain at the very uh, top of the, of the priorities. One is that the fiscal consolidation needs to be continued, and the Prime Minister-designate is totally committed to that, and therefore, to the extent that that requires continued reorganization and, and raising of the efficiency of the work, I think it is going to continue. And second, or maybe actually first by now, now that the fiscal deficit doesn't look uh, bad at all, uh, is the business environment, the conduciveness of the business environment. So it might well be that uh, public administration reform ends up playing uh, a, as important a role as in Macedonia, especially as, yes, there is peer pressure, if nothing else, through the go doing business <laughs> list, which doesn't and cannot fully uh, uh, measure the extent to which uh, a, a government, public administration is in fact competitive, but it is one of the hardest measures there are, and, and undoubtedly the Serbian government is very committed to, to doing everything it takes to both improve in that list and in fact improve truly the, the uh, uh, investor's experience. Um, now, uh, yes, that much peer pressure, but I actually have to say that more than peer pressure, it is really exciting to be hearing about our colleagues' efforts and what we want is to learn from each other. And we've already benefited, uh, I know from Macedonia's experience in um, integrating the um, uh, construction permit permitting uh, process in an electronic, integrated electronic process, and I'm sure there will be um, other other issues to discuss, and as I said, also learning from the Albanian experience, which is not a, a, a Yugoslav legacy, that's uh, very interesting to contrast as well. So, looking forward to talking to my colleagues. Well, in, 
In Albania, this is absolutely a very, very important part of our work and of our government. Uh, because to tell you the truth, this is the top reform. This is the reform of the reforms. If we want to have the other reforms, like the judicial one, educational, and all the other reforms, first you have to have a good, consolidated uh, administration, professionalized uh, people who will do the other reforms and who will help the country to improve uh, for better, even in our economic life. If we don't have people, like real experts in our public administration, this would really uh, limit our future uh, in economy terms as well. Uh, for the other areas, I think it's important in the way we uh, provide services to our people as well. Uh, and one very, very important thing for us is that we really want to get uh, all our best Albanians that are living in the other countries to get them back in the country. And to do this, we really need to show that our public administration is functioning, our institutions are functioning. We really need to get all the, the students that are studying in the, in the other uh, European members uh, and to get their expertise in our administration. So I think this reform is crucial and it's, uh, to us it's top to, to everything else. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to, to ask the uh, audience, are there any further questions? Otherwise, I would, there's one left. Is there another one? No. Well, then it's the last question from the audience. Thank you for the floor. I would be very brief. Uh, my name is Ply. I come from Slovakia. And uh, I was chairman of civil service office, which was set up uh, in 2002 based on civil service law. Uh, in pre-accession period, uh, uh, and uh, survive only two years after uh, accession of Slovakia to the European Union due to constantly losing political support for a concept of uh, professionality, stability, and especially political neutrality of civil service. All of these principles, merit-based principles, which was incorporated and very clearly stipulated in law was uh, diminished, was vanished in the haze uh, after a very short period uh, of our membership uh, and, <clears throat> and now uh, the situation is, is uh, uh, very, I must say, <laughs> very bad uh, due to a very high level of uh, corruption in the country and uh, uh, political criminality. So uh, from my point of view, <clears throat> uh, the priority number one, the fundamental question in my country is depoliticization of, of the whole concept of civil service. Everything is over-politicized and not only civil service, but also police, uh, judiciary system and so on, the intervention and possibility to intervene into professional behavior of uh, all uh, <clears throat> executive uh, and, and judiciary body is so high that, that, that there is no other chance, uh, only, only depoliticiz depoliticization in the sense that we, we are ready to prepare and uh, put uh, uh, into parliament uh, the constitutional law on merit-based principles, which are nine in numbers and are really very uh, clearly elaborated and stipulated in paragraphs of this constitutional law. Uh, it's important, uh, the shape of constitutional law is important due to sustainability of the whole concept because each four years election period and, and permanent changing of government and, and uh, changing uh, the staff in civil service it's it's no other possibility only only <clears throat> uh, this this kind of constitutional law the second uh, step is uh, also establishing the independent uh, merit based protection board which is uh, independent body uh, who will who will take care on on all of these uh, merit based principles and uh, also uh, part of this, uh, this uh, law is about prohibited personal practices, uh, which must be also very, very clearly uh, stipulated in law. So, uh, 
for uh, from my, my point of view, I must I must stress that <clears throat> there is no other uh, possibility how to solve all other open questions, issues concerning human resources management, strategy, education, integrity, ethical behavior of civil servants, recruitment, selection, examination. All uh, all of these questions uh, are uh, are. Con contem contemporary to, to the, this first uh, first number priority, which I think that uh, must be solved as a, as a number as a number one, and it's depoliticization. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the for the last uh, round on the panel. I'd like to ask, uh, keeping the institutional uh, memory, as you mentioned, is important. Um, how uh, are you uh, organizing the uh, the uh, uh, assessment for uh, uh, for uh, the head of departments and how long uh, do you uh, do you contract them for five years, ten years, forever? Because uh, I remember uh, being a civil servant to the federal chancellery in Austria. Um, I had seven different uh, uh, ministers and uh, and, uh, and 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 chancellors uh, in a period of twenty years. So. Um, uh, rather, we had to keep the institutional memory as civil servants and help the politicians to make their politics. How, uh, how are you organizing this in your countries? Well, I think the first step was to adopt the civil servant law, which is now uh, fully aligned with the EU acquis and is not allowing any more uh, politicians who are coming uh, you know, in top of our ministries or in our institutions to change the people uh, and to replace them with people that have worked for them and have voted for them in their party lines. So I think this is really, really important. The law does not allow this anymore. It's a very strict law. Uh, which uh, really makes you to be very careful on how you evaluate all the uh, all the public servants uh, in our institutions, uh, and it's uh, it's strict as we we even joke sometimes with uh, with that law because to tell you the truth, you have to wait for a person to retire or you know in order to leave to leave the institution. But this is good. This is good because we if we want to move forward, we really need that institutional memory. We need the people who know how previous work has been done in order for us to continue and to have better results. So this is what we are promoting very strongly now uh, in our country and in our institutions. It is difficult, as I said, because this means we have to change the mentality. It's a risk for the elections, of course, because they come every four years, but uh, at the end of the day, this is a core stone that that we are putting to, to Albania and to, to our future in the EU as well. Thank you. Um, I would say it, that in Serbia, um, actually, all the, the, there, is, there is enough of a, an ethic of a professional civil servant that the fact that politics does affect uh, eventually, and, and, and moving around and replacing rather uh, uh, mostly within the, the civil service, but also there is a possibility to bring new people to posts of, of management, gets a very bad reputation. But, you know, being inside now for two years, I realize most of the people I work with and see, they're all there for a long time. So obviously, it's not as much of an influx as it is sometimes talked about. Nevertheless, there is a very serious problem when it comes exactly to institutional memory, <coughs> which is, and, and I've mentioned before, we already have that kind of a civil service uh, law from 2006, so protection of civil servants is very high, if not necessarily of, you know, there are, but actually one of the ways in which uh, sometimes politics uh, uh, resorts to changing a, 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 a management post is reorganization. There is also every time a new government is formed, uh, ministries uh, and portfolios are defined based on political criteria. And in, a, in an un internal analysis that we've done, the, the breaking apart and reassembling ministries uh, in line with political criteria was actually identified as the most destructive uh, 
uh, of all practices, almost the source of the primary source of all problems. Yes, there is politicization otherwise as well, and there are other issues we don't have enough training or they're not massive enough and so on. But the tendency to actually disassemble, because then institutional memory is very hard to preserve. But I must say one of the things I regret not having prepared better in these two years is a stricter implementation of the rules of handover of documents and programs and so on. I think more could be done there. We, of course, have it all prescribed, but the practice is one thing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the politicization and depolitization of public administration has been, uh, has been a, a, a problem that uh, bothers all our countries. I assume countries in the region and, and, and used to be even in c countries around the world. Uh, this was noted by Sigma while designing their like baseline measurement reports. One of the questions which speaks about the politicization of the public administration is the number, or at least the percentage of the people that, that terminate their contracts when the government changes. And the number of new people in the governments when the government changes, which speaks for themselves like what is the, the real problem there. Um, we were criticized historically as uh, having politically like politicized uh, public administration. And while we were drafting this policy paper uh, discussing about the reform process, we took a clear stand that we are not going to allow this happens anymore. So we decided that we are going to build a system that is immune on not only on political, but even, you know, friendly or relatives or any kind of influence. So this is why we designed such a system. So it is really complicated now to get into Macedonian public administration. They said that it's like you're entering NASA, not, not, I mean, the, the criteria are so high and the entire process is so transparent. There are thousands of tests of your intellectual capacity, expert knowledge, personality profile, everything is online. It's taped, aired, because it's aired online uh, uh, and streamed online on the website on the agency that is doing the hiring. And uh, there is um, prohibited access to the servers and computers where the tests are done. There are special softwares for, for this regard. So the interview has like only 20% of the entire, let's say, uh, evaluation point, so you cannot influence by the results of the, in the interview. So I'm trying to say, I, I really want to say, but we'll see in, in the, in the uh, upcoming years that we have designed a bulletproof system. So to add to this, what you asked is the, the uh, political level of the, of, the, of the senior managerial staff in the public administration. This is again the reform that we did, which was proposed by Sigma, that we should, we should dismiss the, the political role of the state secretaries. So the ministers and deputy ministers are appointed by the government and the parliament. But state secretaries are like permanent secretaries, so which keeps the, 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 the memory, the institutional memory in the organization. There are different kinds of measures that, that uh, we, um, we have foreseen. The way of the termination of contracts in the, in the situations of government change is very strict. It's not possible to do it. So there are many, many, many rules and procedures so, for, so we, are th we are thinking that, that we are going to achieve results on the depolitization of public administration. We are very enthusiastic about this, that we are going to success. And I, I was very sorry when I heard from Slovakia example that it was like a trend before entering the European Union, but since they entered the European Union, the pressure got released and everything is doing the same again. I really hope that we are not going to allow that to happen in, in my country. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Zvilanovic, 
Uh, no. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you as panelists. Uh, thank you very much, M Madam Ministers, uh, for uh, uh, all uh, the, the effort you made to come to our city and uh, to present your reform of uh, public administration. Um, and uh, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Svilanovic, also for organizing this conference together with uh, several other institutions like NALES and KDZ and, and the PA10 and so on, and the Austrian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, so thank you very much. It was the last panel of this uh, conference. And I'd like to ask Mr. Prorok uh, to uh, uh, sum up uh, with the conclusions. Thank you very much. <laughs>